All right, so Lineage OS unofficial updated on the 14th of August for the Redmi Note 10 Pro is what we are talking about. We've been using this ROM for 10 days. This is a complete review and probably one of the best ROMs that you can use on this wonderful device. My name is Kalash and you're watching Smartphone Tutorials. Before we get into the details, please don't forget to click subscribe and hit that notification bell icon because we make amazing videos like this every single day. Now, without further ado, hello, awesome people. Welcome to Phone Ops. My name is Kalash. Let's get going. Now let's see what we have here. We have Lineage OS, an official OSS ROM S that is for sweet, right? S is the Android version 12.1. Lineage OS Android 12L updated on the 14th of August, as I said. And if we talk about the change log, syncs to with latest Lineage OS sources as of 12th of August. So this is fairly recent. There has been a Lineage OS 20 build as well about Android 30. There'll be a video coming on that as well. August ASB added per app thermal and touch sensitivity profiles that's a good thing here memory management changes updated sun buddha battery data from mia 13 kernel dtbo mia 13 firmware is required to be flashed gm is built that means g apps is included in this particular rom rom supports over the air updates existing users will get ot updates now it remains to be seen if it is working only with you know, the lineage OS recovery, or you will be able to do it on TWRP of sorts as well. Although if you flash it manually from TWRP and update, you should be doing just fine. Now, let's talk about what's so interesting that makes me say that this ROM is probably one of the best ROMs for the Note 10 Pro. Now, let me give you a little background over here. I've been using the Redmi Note 10 Pro as one of the devices on this channel for the last two to three months. And uh, I did criticize it initially for the 732G that it has as a processor because it doesn't really allow you to game that much and it doesn't really give you a complete lag-free experience in the user interface as well. But the moment I started using this unofficial build of Lineage OS, kudos to the developer, my opinion has changed quite a lot. Now, the moment you boot into this particular ROM, you will notice that it's smooth as butter, it's fluid, and mind you, I would like to tell you here that please allow this ROM to settle for at least two to three days, and then you can experience the smoothness. Because initially in the first 24, 48 hours, you know, a lot of things are getting settled, analyzed inside the system. So use it for two, three days and you will have the best experience. Now, even if we talk about Google feed in all the 120 Hertz glory over here, you will notice that it's butter smooth and it's working fine. Now, usually I do make videos with the dark mode disabled, but on this particular ROM and this device, I have it enabled for this video. Reason being the pitch dark or the complete black experience Experience that you get on this particular ROM is splendid, it's great, it's amazing, right? Now, all the basic stuff is where it should be and things are working as expected, but there are quite a lot of goodies as well. If you press and hold on the home screen, you do get the new Android 12.1 style wallpaper picker, which is really, really neat. If you go to wallpaper in style, you will notice that you do have a lot of monitor options. You can enable or disable dark theme. Themed icons are present and they're working absolutely fine. Even if you go to the change wallpaper option, you do have quite a lot of beautiful wallpaper, which can be downloaded, right? So that's good. And you do have a lot of Google wallpaper options as well. Now, apart from this, the widget situation here is absolutely fine. Standard Android 12 L stuff, everything is available and working as expected. Now, if you actually go to the launcher settings, you will see that this is a pixel experience launcher that you get. There is some customization available in this launcher, which allows you to make some changes to the way your phone looks and runs on the home screen, right? And as I said, if you swipe to the left and use the Google feed, it is smooth as butter. What else can you expect from a Snapdragon 700 series chipset, right? Now, one more very, very interesting and neat addition here is the addition of ANX camera or MIUI camera. Most of the features in MIUI camera are working absolutely fine. You have no problems in portrait mode for the front or back camera. All of them are working fine. Photo mode, almost wide angle, basic. Most of the features are working as expected on the back camera. Even video, if you go to video over here, you will see that you do get 4K 30 FPS. So not only you have the goodness of a brilliant AOSP ROM, you have a full-blown MIUI camera in-house as well, which is a really, really good thing. And if we talk about things like the app icon animations, they are very, very subtle, very, very smooth to the point where it should be. And hold on, we've not even reached at the best part of this wonderful ROM. Now, if you talk about the quick tiles over here, you do get Monet in action doing all its great 
job. You have some data usage indicator over here. You do have FPS meter and all the other things that can be enabled, your network info, Wi-Fi info, battery percentage. The only thing that I don't see over here is battery estimates. That would have been good to see here, a neat addition. The power menu does allow you to do a lot of, you know, advanced restart stuff. And the animation here is great as well, right? Now, there is a so setting shortcut over here, which works as expected. If you go to the edit menu, surprisingly, you know, Linear Joyce is supposed to be a bare bones, basic Android clean ROM. It does have quite a lot of customization options, extra dim, AOD, reading mode, in display, kernel inversion, caffeine, FPS info, screen recorder. So those things are working fine. And as far as the screen recorder is concerned, it does allow you to use internal and external audio while recording the screen. But this is a mid-range device and I would not encourage you to record the screen while playing game because you would either have choppy recording or choppy gameplay. If you want to enjoy the gaming experience on this ROM, I would suggest kill all the background processes and then just focus on that game and you should be getting a pretty, pretty decent experience. Give a thumbs up to this video and let me know in the comment section if you want me to make a gaming review on the Note 10 Pro for this Lineage OS ROM. Now, last but not the least, let's actually go to settings over here. Let's go to about phone and click on Android version 12. Now, as you can see, this is a 14th August unofficial build, 5th August security patch. So that is the latest and the build date is similar as well. Now, it does come with perf, uh, you know, a customized perf kernel over here. So nothing fancy there. Apart from this, if you go to battery, you do get things like thermal profiles over here. So you can go ahead and adjust that accordingly and it works as expected. And we will talk about the battery life in a bit. But before that, all the other basic functions like making calls, Wi-Fi calling, receiving text messages, data speed, Wi-Fi network speed, everything is available and works as expected. Moving on, if you actually go to the system section of this particular ROM, you do have things like system profiles, button customization, status bar customization with swipe to screenshot. So all these things in Android custom ROMs have now become a standard and they work as expected. Now, before we get to the benchmark numbers, let me actually tell you, you easily get around five hours of screen on time on an average on this particular ROM as you can see and on an average i've been using it 12 to 14 hours a day this is not a primary device but yes you know as you can see we've tested it for a very long time and that is the reason we are telling you that the decent experience we got in battery life is pretty amazing now even if we talk about the charging speeds over here those are pretty decent as you can see 62 percent per hour so one hour 20 minutes stops on a 33 watt charger your phone would charge from zero to 100. Now let's talk about the important fact of benchmark numbers and for that first we will go to Google Photos in which you do get unlimited storage so that's a good thing. Now as you can see the CPU throttled to 87% of its max performance and the average was 145 646 GIPS the max score being 158 656 GIPS. Now in CPU throttle this doesn't blow the numbers away and give you an excellent excellent score but wait till you watch the amplitude numbers over here and you might be in for a surprise 377805 these are the individual scores and they are doing a pretty decent job we also have geekbench in question over here so let's talk about uh, you know the single core and multi core score over here now as you can see i tested it on the 9th of august and then later 560 single core 1632 multi core now the charging speed battery backup is good banking applications work fine wide wide level is present and surprisingly this is one of the better roms when it comes to gaming on apex legends and call of duty mobile so in my opinion this is one of the better roms that you can use as a daily driver especially considering you don't have any issues with your banking applications and content consumption plus you do have miui cameras so your picture taking needs are taken care of as well let me know in the comment section what do you think about this rom and will you be using it or not until the next one, this is Kalash, signing off at Phone Ops. Keep smiling, take care, goodbye.